Welcome back. I'm Mark Summers taking a trip down memory lane to the days of cooking with Mom. But, you know, sometimes Mom didn't have all the answers. That's where this came in handy. It's the joy of cooking. It's been a kitchen helper for decades, and we're going to drop in on a place that continues to make this classic cookbook a family affair. From the outside, it looks like a quiet house. That's funny. Cook it for one to three hours. But inside, you'll find a lot of joy going on. It's the home of Ethan Becker, third-generation author of The Joy of Cooking, a familiar food manual that's been a fixture in the kitchen since 1931. Back then, Ethan's grandmother, Irma Rombauer, wrote a 400-page cookbook and sold it by mail order from her St. Louis home. Her friendly, no-nonsense style was a new taste for the cooking masses. Irma said to people in the book, she said, Come into my kitchen. We're going to have fun together. We're going to take something that we have to do, and we're going to make it a joy. Even the deco artwork on the first edition reflects this creative approach. At St. Martha at Bethany, with mop and pot, slaying the awful dragon of domestic drudgery. The cookbooks slayed the competition as well, with new editions arriving in 1936 and 1941. None of them, however, mentioned Irma's little secret. Irma was not a very good cook, but uh, she knew exactly who in the family and who amongst her social acquaintances were the best cooks. In 1951, Irma's daughter Marion Becker took over pen, whisk, and spoon, turning the joy into an edible encyclopedia. She included not only recipes, but health tips, menus, and even entertaining guides. And since 1976, Ethan has continued in the family tradition, preparing upcoming Joy editions. And although he's a classically trained chef from the Cordon Bleu in Paris, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I've always tried to retain it, my mother and grandmother did, an amateur's attitude. I try and make it easy for people. But creating 40 to 50 new recipes a year, in addition to tweaking past favorites, demands a little extra help and a watchful eye. Okay, now tell me what you're putting in there. Probably about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of rosemary. Uh, it helps to have a recipe writer handy when you're cooking if you want to get the recipe. I cook, and she tries to figure out what I'm doing to it. Her main job is to say... How much was that? Say one tablespoon or two tablespoons. And with about 2,500 recipes to keep track of, the Joy family developed a special way to recognize their top tastes. What the term cocaine means in the book really is that it's one of our family's favorites. Brownie? Since its inception, 13 different editions and revisions have been cooked up in the kitchen. And during its run, the joy has put on a little weight. The 1931 book was about 400 pages. The uh, 1997 book is about hovering around 1,200 pages. And checking the date on your copy might be wise if you're looking for extra dough. The Joy of Cooking editions over the years are hugely collectible. The 1931 edition, the self-published edition by Irma, will sell for anywhere from $800 to $6,000. Marilyn Monroe's Joy of Cooking from the 60s went for $39,000. And what began as a mail-order manual has become a cooking colossus. Over the entire course of the life of this book since 1931, we're talking 15, 17 million copies, and that probably only just covers North America. I, I can't even begin to tell you how many copies of this book around the world are in print. 